<sighs> a plume of breath escaped Bakugo's lips and wafted in the cold winter air. Having made some time to spruce himself up this Christmas season, he walked along the snow-covered pavement with you in his arms, hanging off from your shoulders. You held onto his wrist before he reached out for your hand, holding it beside him while his weight pushed you down. Why did I agree to this? He questioned, more so to himself rather than to anyone in particular. <laughs> um, because he's your friend? You answered inquisitively. Tch, damn nerd. Christmas is overrated. You snuck a quick peek at his face, a little red in the cheeks more so from the cold while he buried his nose into the thick scarf he had wrapped around his neck. Yet his eyes looked distant. He was deep in thought, contemplating his decision about his Christmas invitation to Midoriya's. Are you having second thoughts? You asked, a little concerned. Why would I be? He questioned. We're almost there, lightweight. I mean, he told you what he was planning. I'm happy that you're supporting him. <sighs> A grumble murmured from his scarf when you spotted his eyes looking away from you. You chuckled before you heard a voice in the distance. Actually a few echoing in the cold. Both of you stopped to turn, finding Kirishima on his way, pulling along his partner by their hand, as well as Ashido. Kirishima! Ishido! Hey! You called, waving your hand in the air. Hey, you two! Called Kirishima, reaching the both of you with his partner in tow. Excited? I heard Midori has got a big roast happening. And all of the sweets! <laughs> Added Ishido, brimming with joy. Is it only just your stomachs you're excited over? You questioned with a smile. What did you expect? Sneered Bakugo before he earned an elbow to the ribs by Kirishima. Aw, oh, come on Bakugo, it's not like you're not excited, aren't you? He asked jovially and jokingly to a degree. I'm not. Wow, someone's a party pooper tonight, continued Ishido. Is it because you're not cooking? Will you quit it? Well, Thumper and I are going ahead. Meet you guys there! exclaimed Kirishima before he pulled his partner with him in tow. See you guys! Followed up Ashido, taking steps ahead to catch up to Kirishima. Hope there's still some treats for you left! This isn't Halloween, raccoon eyes! exclaimed Bakugo, irate of his friends' antics before they disappeared in the distance. You eyed your surroundings of the snow covered street until you noticed a building up ahead, not too far, catching a glimpse of the three silhouettes heading into the foyer room. You smiled to yourself at the three before glancing at Bakugo's already irate mood. You merely shifted your hand towards his, wrapping your fingers around his rough ones, feeling him reciprocate in kind without even batting an eyelid towards you. You shook your head, knowing full well that Bakugo, despite this mood, still was present with you. Arriving at Midoriya's was an interesting greeting, with both men mutually saying their hellos before Bakugo stomped his way inside. You reassured Midoriya of Bakugo's mood, knowing of what was to come, and thanked him for the invitations. The evening moved on while more guests arrived, before it was a cosy fit in the lounge. With eggnog in hand, you caught up with Bakugo's friends on events after the school reunion, until the topic of your engagement became the focus. Specifically... <laughs> Wait! You're joking, right? <laughs> Please tell me you are. Laughed Kaminari. Do I look like I'm laughing? 
growled Bakugo through gritted teeth, his back leaning against the wall while he had his arms around you. <laughs> Can't believe you of all people had the worst timing, commented Kirishima. Them falling off the boat. Sounds like a rom-com waiting to happen. <laughs> you pouted at the observation, but you couldn't deny the hilarity in visualizing that scene in your head. Hey, at least they said yes, piped Sero, before a scoff escaped Bakugo's lips. You guys know I'm right here. You spoke, pointing a finger at yourself to emphasize your point. Kirishima grinned while he ruffled the top of your head, that cheesy, mischievous look he had whenever he was teasing, no matter who it was. <laughs> Welcome to the family, he commented. Will you shut it, shitty hair? growled Bakugo. You felt his arms tighten around you, almost possessively. Bakugo had always been irate, but you've never felt it at this intensity, especially around his friends. Soon, Kaminari decided to grab some more eggnog, asking Sero and Kirishima to come along. Over the years, you've learned how mature Kaminari had grown since his days in UA, finding the irony in how he picked up some odd jobs with the commission of all institutions. Once all of Bakugo's friends had left, you felt his hold on you loosen a little before his head dipped onto yours, as if he was trying to hide away behind you. Katsuki, are you okay? You asked while your fingers trailed along his arm. He gruffly grunted on your neck, his heat nothing short of present against your back. If you don't feel like staying, we could leave early. It isn't that, he interrupted. I wish it was because of Deku, but it isn't. I'm listening. You felt him exhale out of frustration. A sense of release he needed before he admitted what weighed on his chest. Oh, it's that damn extra. He started. I'd annihilate them if it wasn't for the damn media and their idiotic obsession over us. Your shoulders slumped, both in exasperation and relief. It was comforting to know that Bakugo's distaste for Midoriya wasn't the driving force of his frustrations, but the media learning of your engagement was frivolous. Both Bakugo and yourself suspect it was your ex that spilled the beans to the media, using their position as an agency manager to give irrevocable evidence. Yet this caused a few headaches in the public before the Christmas holidays. Working became difficult everywhere you stepped, while the most basic chores like shopping became a nightmare. The rhythmic breathing on your neck warmed you, to the point that it was warming up quicker in the apartment than you expected. You turned to face Bakugo, hugging onto him while he stared back at you with that all-too-familiar scowl. Hey, it was bound to happen one way or another, you remarked, hoping that it would ease his mind a little. And besides, it's Midoriya's night. I think we could forget about the public eye for a while. On cue, the both of you turned to find Midoriya conversing with Todoroki by the dining table seeing that smiling yet flustered look on his face. You heard a mild scoff from Bakugo, and upon turning to face him, his scowl softened a little. Let's enjoy the night, you whispered, pressing against his jumper. Maybe we'll get to listen to your friends drunk crooning. Ugh, that's the last thing I want to hear, he scoffed earning a playful chuckle from you before the three returned with more eggnog in hand. Not to your surprise, Kirishima and Sero sang on cue, caroling the night away. Bakugo's irritation only brewed and simmered, complaining to Kaminari who was surprisingly the adult in this situation this time around. 
Thankfully, his plus one improved on the entertainment with Jiro, swaying and bobbing to the gentle tunes of their carols, while Bakugo still held on to you, finally calming a little. Both of your attention was drawn more so to Midoriya, after he had taken his partner outside, onto their balcony. Exciting, isn't it? You asked softly. Tch, whatever, scoffed Bakugo, his eyes still watching despite his tone. Bet the nerd will choke at some point. Well, we didn't have a smooth moment ourselves. Actually, there were plenty. And all of them were goddamn- I know. You interrupted. Do I still have to apologize? <sighs> no. But you're mine now. That possessiveness of his made you smirk. Thankfully, Bakugo did learn about boundaries, but his actions never lied out in public. You chuckled before cheerful cries filled the room, watching the scene unfold outside on the balcony. Camera flashes blinked every so often in capturing the moment, only hearing a curdled growl from deep within Bakugo's chest. You gazed at him while his eyes still looked ahead. He watched before Midoriya locked eyes with him for a moment, finding that goofy smile on his face. Unspoken. Bakugo nodded his head, affirming to Midoriya before he returned in the moment with his now engaged fiancé. Katsuki? You called, bringing his attention back onto you. His red eyes peered at you through that scowl before he kissed you deeply. He took the opportunity seeing how everyone was so focused on Midoriya right now. You allowed his hunger to be satiated, holding you close to his chest before he pulled away for you to breathe. That smirk of his returned, proud of seeing you surprised and flustered at his actions. Merry Christmas, Twinkle Toes, he whispered. That nerd better not have a wedding before we do. Bakugo scoffed before he took another swig of his eggnog, spotting Midoriya enter into the apartment now an engaged man. Of course, he needed to throw an insult at some point, yet you chuckled at how lackluster the insult was. In fact, it wasn't much of one. It was a challenge. Well, we better get a move on it. You teased, eyeing the now newly engaged couple in the room. We've lost our head start. Thank you for tuning in to another fanfiction reading. If you enjoy the content provided on this channel, or you would just prefer to fall asleep to my voice, please ring the bell, hit that like button, and please subscribe to my channel. I hope you have a lovely Christmas holiday, and I hope the new year will be a happy one to follow. Thank you for visiting. I hope to hear from you soon, next we meet.